Ola lovely. So I am record going to do um our Freaky Fridays. Sorry, the lighting is terrible, terrible right here. Um, but I was sitting here editing, so I figured I would just go ahead and film right here since I was sitting here. Sorry, the light is terrible. It's crappy lighting. So this week's Freaky Fridays is going to be, um, this is going to be like a multi-parter because I, I, yeah, I, I, I can't do it all in one. It's just too much information. So I'm doing it on the Amityville murders are also the Amityville horror. And the first part, part one is going to be the DeFeo portraits. This is basically who the DeFeos were and what their life was kind of like and then what their personalities were like and stuff like that. And I will have pictures in here too. Anyways. Okay. So the DeFeo portraits. Ronald Joseph Big Ronnie DeFeo Sr. was born on November 16, 1930 to parents Rocco and Antoinette DeFeo. When he was younger, Big Ronnie was slender, handsome, and had a powerful gaze reminiscent of Rudolph Valentino's. With his suave looks, he was able to attract the attention of Louise Marie Brigante. Born on November 3, 1931 to Michael and Angela Brigante, Louise had wanted to pursue a modeling career, and she was beautiful enough to hobnob with the best, including legendary sing singer Mel Torme. After a brief courtship, Big Ronnie and Louise got married since the Brigantes disapproved of Big Ronnie. They cut all ties with the newlyweds until September 26 of 1951 when Ronald Joseph DeFeo Jr. was born. Growing up, Butch DeFeo had it hard because Butch was the firstborn and a boy and his father expected more from him and Big Ronnie was not afraid to dis discipline Butch in the cruelest fashion. One minute he would hug his son and the next minute he would completely throw him across the room. Uh, Louise's brother, Michael Bergante Jr., would later testify at the DeFeo trial that an incident he witnessed when Butch was two years old, he said, We were all sitting down in the basement watching TV, and I don't know, the boy had done something, and all of a sudden he just stood up, the father, and he pushed the boy this way into the wall, and the boy banged his head or part of his shoulder or something. As a child, Butch was extremely overweight and would remain so until his later teenage years when he began using amphetamines. Butch's school life suffered because he was because of his weight problem. Bigger kids would often make fun of him, calling him names like the Blob, Bucky Beaver, and Pork Chop. Butch was not only a child not the was not an only child for long. On July 29, 1956, Louise gave birth to a doctor, daughter, Don Teresa DeFeo. A few years later, on August 16, 1961, Louise gave birth to Allison Louise DeFeo. And then again on September 4, 1962, to Mark Gregory DeFeo. So they had a pretty, pretty big family. Sometime after the birth of Mark Louise, Mark, Louise decided to leave her husband for reasons that remain unclear. To get his wife back, Big Ronnie decided to put his writing talents to good use. Needing to express his love for his wife, Big Ronnie co-wrote a song for his album titled One is a Lonesome Number. On October 24, 1965, Big Ronnie was blessed with the third son, John Matthew DeFeo, and by this time the family had moved from their Brooklyn apartment to the affluent Long Island South Shore community of Amityville. Only for many, it was a mystery how Big Ronnie could afford such a lavish home and car dealers, service managers, salary. The answer was clear, his father-in-law, Michael Briganti Sr. In the early 1970s, Big Ronnie decided that he wanted a series of life-size portraits created to immortalize his family, so once more, Big Ronnie's father-in-law, Michael Briganti Sr., picked up the tab, which was estimated to be at least $50,000, painstakingly detailed the portraits, took over a year to complete upon their completion. 
the life-size portraits hung in the large golden frames on the staircase wall in between the first and second floors of the DeFeo home. All of the information and pictures I have found are from AmityvilleMurders.com. You can look it up. There's also books you can read. Um, I will get into more of the Amityville Horror next week in next week's Freaky Fridays. I figured I would break it down so it's not so long and that way it's not so bad. So this is part one and this is just the 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 portrait on the family and I have the pictures of the portraits that the DeFeos had made up to hang in their home. I have those portraits. So I will post those in the video as I'm as the video is going they will be up. Um there's not many there's not many pictures but next week I will get into more so of the Amityville murders like I said because this is an extensive um case and it is based on true events um, it's not like you can just get into one thing and be like, oh, this is what happened. They murdered an entire family. No, there's more to it. Um, when you, when you, when I get into like, the, 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 don't think of me weird, but the serial killer thing or the murder thing, it, it really does interest me on how the person's brain works. And... It interests me to see what their life was like before they made the decision to do what they decided to do. Not saying that it was right, and I'm not saying at all that there was a reason why, but you can understand some of it as you get into the story and that. So this week, this is this week's Freaky Fridays. I will have it up in probably tomorrow morning. Probably tomorrow morning or tomorrow night I will upload it. And next week I will get more into the Amityville murders too. And if you guys have any more ideas of um, Freaky Friday's ideas, just let me know. And I will put them on the list of things too. And I will talk to you lovelies later. Love you.